How's it going, people? We're almost done with Alma. Happy days. Still got some of this left. That makes me happy. We are on the penultimate chapter of Alma. Chapter 62. It's a thirsty one. I want to let you know that in advance. It's a bit long, too. And it does start with a drink. Just need a little sip there. All right. Let's read the masthead here. Ronai marches to relief of Pahoran. Sarah Himla, recaptured from the rebels. Help sent to Helaman. Lehi at Tiancum. Lamanites concentrate in the, in the land of Moroni. Tiancum slays Emeron. At cost of his own life, Lamanites driven out of land. Maybe I should have skipped all that. That gives too much away. I mean, no wonder this is so boring. They tell you what's going to happen first. And now, it came to pass. Just like this Book of Alma's going to. That when Moroni had received this epistle, his heart did take courage and was filled with exceeding great joy because of the faithfulness of Pahoran that he was not also a traitor to the freedom and cause of his country. Two, but he did also mourn exceedingly because of the iniquity of those who had driven out Pahoran from his judgment seat. Yea, a minute ago you're going to go kick his ass. <laughs> In fine, because of those who had rebelled against their country and also their God, because we know that gods are kind of tied down to geography most of the time, <laughs> unless they're believers travel. Three, and it came to pass. Ugh. That Moroni took a small number of men, according to the desire of Pahoran, and gave Lehi and Tian command over the remainder of the army, and took his march towards the land of Gideon. Four, and he did raise the standard of liberty in whatever place he did enter, and gain whatsoever force he could in all his march towards the land of Gideon. Five. And it came to pass. This is the uh, Outer Limits soundtrack from the uh, 90s. Awesome TV show. Five. And it came to pass that thousands did flock unto his standard, and did take up their swords in the defense of their freedom, that they might not come into bondage. 6. And thus, when Moroni had gathered uh, together whatsoever men he could in all his march, he came to the land of Gideon, and uniting his force with those of Bahoran, they became exceeding strong, even stronger than the men of Pacus. Yeah, Pacus. Who was the king of those dissenters who had driven the free men out of the land of Zarahimla? 
and had taken possession of the land. Seven. And it came to pass... That Moroni and Pahoran went down with their armies into the land of Zarahimla and went forth against the city and did meet the men of Bacchus insomuch that they did come to battle. Eight. And behold, Bacchus was slain and his men were taken prisoners and Pohoran was restored to his judgment seat. 9. And the men of Pacchus received their trial according to the law, and also those king men who had been taken and, and cast into prison, and they were executed according to the law. Yea, those men of Pacchus and those king men Whosoever would not take up arms in defense of their country, but would fight against it, <coughs> were put to death. 10. And thus it became expedient that this law should be strictly observed for the safety of their country, yea, and whosoever was found denying their freedom was speedily executed according to the law. Sounds wonderful. Eleven. And thus ended the thirtieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, Moroni, and Pahor, and all those people under them. Yeah. Having restored peace to the land of Zarahimla, among their own people, having inflicted death upon all those who were not true to the cause of freedom. <laughs> yeah, we're going to give you liberty or death. <laughs> Twelve. And it came to pass... In the commencement of the thirty and first year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, let's follow the asterisk, BC 61, with authority. Moroni immediately caused that provisions should be sent and also an army of 6,000 men should be sent into unto Helaman to assist him in preserving that part of the land. Thirteen. Give a second here. Well, the Book of Alma is definitely ending with a bang, isn't it? Or at least a lot of blood spatter. All right. Thirteen. And he also caused that an army of 6,000 men with a sufficient quantity of food should be sent to the armies of Lehi and Teancum. And it came to pass in the middle of verse 13. That this was done to fortify the land against the Lamanites. Fourteen, and it came to pass. <sighs> that Moroni and Pahoran, leaving a large body of men in the land of Zarahimla, took their march with a large body of men towards the land of Nephiha. 
being determined to overthrow the Lamanites in that city. Fifteen. And it came to pass. <sighs> that, as they were marching towards the land, they took a large body of men of the Lamanites and slew many of them and took their provisions and their weapons of war. Sixteen. And it came to pass after they had taken them, they caused them to enter into a covenant that they would no more take up their weapons of war against the Nephites. <clears throat> 17. And when they had entered into this covenant, they sent them to dwell with the people of Ammon. And they were in number about 4,000 who had not been slain. 8. And it came to pass. 18. Eighteen, and it came to pass <sighs> that when they had sent them away, they pursued their march towards the land of Nephi, -ha, and it came to pass again. Same fucking verse. Damn it, I hate that. Ugh. It came to pass that when they had come to the city of Nephi, -ha, they did pitch their tents in the plains of Nephi, -ha, <coughs> which is near the city of Nephi Ha, in case you didn't know. Nineteen. Now, Moroni was desirous that the Lamanites should come out to battle against them upon the plains, but the Nephites, knowing of their exceeding great courage, and behold, beholding the great <coughs> greatness of their numbers, Therefore, they durst not come out against them. Therefore, they did not come out to battle in that day. Twenty. And when the night came, Moroni went forth in the darkness of the night, and came upon the top of the wall, to spy out in what part of the city of the Lamanites, which, what part of the city of the Lamanites did camp with their army. So, this uh, Morona is kind of like a ninja or something, you know? He just scales a wall and he's walking along. And 21. And it came to pass. that they were on the east by the entrance and they were all asleep. They're a bunch of bums. And now Moroni returned to his army and caused that they should prepare in haste strong cords and ladders to be let down from the top of the wall into the inner part of the wall. They can do that. Let's wait about, oh, six hours for them to get a good sleep and wake up, and it'll be a cool effect. <laughs> they go, whoa, shit, we're surrounded. <laughs> Sorry. Got distracted. 
cheap thing. Killians. This is killing me, and I love it. It's wonderful stuff. Twenty two. And it came to pass at Moroni. Hang on. Caused that his men should march forth and come upon the top of the wall and let themselves down into that part of the city. Yea, even on the west where the Lamanites did not camp with their armies. And it came to pass uh, that they were all let down into the city by night by the means of their strong cords and their ladders. They're using both. Uh... <laughs> Thus, when the morning came, they were all within the walls of the city. Time to wake them up. 24. And now, when the Lamanites awoke, they saw that the armies of Moroni were within the walls, and they were affrighted exceedingly, insomuch that they did flee out by the pass. That was lame. 25. And now, when Moroni saw that they were fleeing before him, they, he did cause that his men should march forth against them, and slew many, and surrounded many others, and took them prisoners, and the remainder of them fled into the land of Moroni, which was in the borders of the seashore. Isn't that ironic, huh? <laughs> they fled from Moroni to Moroni. All right. 26. <coughs> and thus had Moroni and Pahoran obtained the possession of the city of Nephi without the loss of one soul. And there were many of the Lamanites who were slain. 27. Now, it came to pass. That many of the Lamanites that were prisoners were desirous to join the people of Ammon and become free people. 28. And it came to pass uh, that as many as were desirous unto them to be granted according to their desires. 19. Therefore all the prisoners of the Lamanites did join the people of Ammon, and did begin to labor exceedingly. Tilling the ground, raising all manner of grain, and flocks, and herds of every kind. Or at least most of them. A lot of them. Some of them. Some. And thus were the Nephites <coughs> relieved of a great burden, yea, insomuch that they were relieved from all the prisoners of the Lamanites. Thirty. Now it came to pass. This is a long chapter. Ah. Uh. 
that Moroni, after he had obtained possession of the city of Nephi, having taken many prisoners, which did reduce the armies of the Lamanites exceedingly, and having regained many of the Nephites who had been taken prisoner, uh, which did strengthen the army of Moroni exceedingly, because they're going right back to war whether they want to or not. Of course, they really want to. They all do. Therefore, Moroni went forth from the land of Nephi to the land of Lehi. <coughs> 31. And it came to pass in the nick of time. Oh, that when the Lamanites saw that Moroni was coming against them, they were again frightened and fled before the army of Moroni. 32, and it came to pass... that Moroni and his army did pursue them from city to city until they met by Lehi and Teancum and the Lamanites fled from Lehi and Teancum even down upon the borders by the seashore until they came to the land of Moroni. 33. And the armies of the Lamanites were all gathered together insomuch that they were all in one body and in the land of Moroni. Now Amoron, Amoron the king of the Lamanites, was also with them. <coughs> Hang on. Last soldier. God damn. Oops. Thirty-four, and it came to pass. <gasps> that felt like it should have been more. Oh. Actually, I don't want too much more. <laughs> that Moroni and Lehi and Teancum did encamp with their armies round about in the borders of the land of Moroni, insomuch that the Lamanites were encircled about in the borders by the wilderness on the south and in the borders by the wilderness on the east. 35. And thus they did encamp for the night. For behold, the Lamanites, for behold, the Nephites and the Lamanites also were weary because of the greatness of the march. <coughs> Therefore, they did not resolve upon any stratagem in the night time, save it were Teancum, for he was exceeding angry with Amaron, insomuch that he considered that Amaron and Amalekiah, his brother, 
had been the cause of this great and lasting war between them and the Lamanites, which had been the cause of so much war and bloodshed, yea, and so much famine. 36. And it came to pass... Oh, that Teancum, in his anger, did go forth into the camp of the Lamanites. Fucking ninja, man. Ninja mode. And did let himself down over the walls of the city. And he went forth with a cord from place to place, insomuch that he did find the king unguarded, I guess. Or they were asleep, too. <clears throat> and he did cast a javelin at him, which did pierce him near the heart. But behold, the king did awake his servant before he died, insomuch that he did pursue Teancum and slew him. 37. Now it came to pass... that when Lehi... And Moroni knew that Teancum was dead. They were exceeding sorrowful, because you can't count on them anymore. <laughs> For behold, he had been a man who had fought valiantly for his country. Yea, a true friend of liberty. And he had suffered many exceeding sore afflictions. But behold, he was dead and probably happy. And had gone the way of all the earth. Wait a minute. He went the way of all the earth. Including insects and bacteria and whatever. So he died and he... Yeah. <sighs> Whatever. 38. Now, it came to pass... See, I don't have time for that shit. Oh. That Moroni marched forth on the morrow and came upon the Lamanites insomuch that they did slay them with a great slaughter, and they did drive them out of the land, and they did flee, even that they did not return at that time against the Nephites. 39. And thus, there's an asterisk, B.C. 60, people. <coughs> Sixty years before J.C. gets birthed. All right. Thirty-nine. And thus ended the thirty and first year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus they had had wars and bloodshed and famine and affliction and... For the space of many years, too many to number, but we forgot. Forty. And there had been murders and contentions and dissensions and all manner of iniquity among the people of Nephi. Nevertheless, for the righteousness sake, yea, because of the prayers of the righteous, they were spared. Lucky you. 41. 
But, behold, because of the exceeding great length of the war between the, the Nephites and the Lamanites, many had become hardened because of the exceeding great length of the war, and many were softened because of their afflictions, insomuch that they did humble themselves before God. Even in the depth of humility. 42. And it came to pass. Just in time. Long chapter, huh? <sighs> that, after Moroni had fortified those parts of the land which were most exposed to the Lamanites until they were sufficiently strong, he returned to the city of Zarahimla, and also Helaman returned to the place of his inheritance. And, uh, And Tiancum returned to the dust. Damn, I hate that. This is some belchy stuff. I like that. It's just keep, keep, it's getting caught right here. Which is no fun at all. And there was once more peace established among the people of Nephi. 43. And Moroni yielded up the command of his armies into the hands of his son, lots of nepotism here, whose name was Moranaiha. Just add a, add a ha at the end and got a new name. And he retired to his own house that he might spend the remainder of his days in peace. 44. And Pahoran did return to his judgment seat, and Helaman did take upon him again to preach unto the people the word of God. For because of so many wars and contentions, it had become expedient that a regulation should be made again in the church. 45. Therefore, Helaman and his brethren went forth and did declare the word of God with much power unto convincing of many people of their wickedness which did cause them to repent of their sins and to be baptized unto the Lord their God. 46. And it came to pass. Damn. This is itching. God damn. How many more are there? All right. uh, that... They did establish again the Church of God throughout all the land. 47. Yea, and regulations were made concerning the law, and their judges and their chief judges were chosen. 48. And the people of Nephi began to prosper again in the land. That's because they're all working very fucking hard including all their slaves. I mean, excuse me, people of Ammon. Yeah, they don't want any weapons. And began to multiply. They better. And to wax exceeding strong again in the land. It's too bad that no longer applies, but these Mormon fucktards keep crapping out a kid every year and a half it seems. Not all of them excuse me. I know some don't. Some do and that is fucking up the world. They're not the only ones. But 
very fucked up. And they began to grow exceeding rich. Forty-nine. But, notwithstanding their riches, or their strength, or their prosperity, they were not lifted up in the pride of their own of their eyes, neither were they slow to remember the Lord their God, but they did humble themselves exceedingly before him, because he's so awesome and almighty. He might get, you know, annoyed if you stand up without, you know, groveling and all that. Fifty! Yea, they did remember how great things the Lord had done for them. I must have missed all of those. That they had delivered them from death, and from bonds, and from prisons, except when it was God's will that those things happened. But that's perfectly understandable. And from all manner of afflictions, and he had delivered them out of the hands of their enemies. See, I'm trying to help. Uh, 51. And they did pray unto the Lord their God continually. There we go again. Mormons, do you pray continually? I mean, really? All the time? <coughs> Insomuch that the Lord did bless them according to his word, so that they did wax strong and prosper in the land. They deserved it. They earned it. 52. And it came to pass. Ah, dead soldiers, folks. Also, wait, oh, 52. And it came to pass that all these things were done. And Helaman died. And in the 30th and 5th year of the reign of the judges of the people of Nephi, being 50, um, BC 57. So, anyway, one more chapter to go. Then we could read. Helaman. So, I hope you learned something. And I hope you'll tell me what it is. Because <laughs> I didn't get much out of that. Except drunk. <laughs> Peace. The fuck out. I hope you'll join me for the final chapter. Of Alma. Then we read Helaman. And then we get to see JC pop up in North America. Pretty cool. Not really. But anyway, you'll like it. Or not.